Welcome back to another video on how to build a Unity multiplayer game using Normcore in VR. Now, last time we covered how to interact with objects, how to form custom actions, like how to change a light colour, how to shoot an object out of a gun. Previously we picked up how to sync up objects between clients, as well as a few other things such as basic setup. This time, we're going to actually make it so people can be in different rooms and you don't have all your players sharing the same room because that's going to really be a mess if you have every single, like, hundreds of people all in the same place. You don't want that. You're going to want to split them up between a variety of different rooms where they can play your game in peace. Okay. Now, I really hope this is going to help you. I really hope you enjoy it. If you have any ideas what you want to see next time, please leave a comment. Let me know. I, I, haven't known, I don't really know what to do for the next one, so... It'll be really appreciated. Um, and if you enjoy, please subscribe, please like. That'll be really cool. Enjoy. Okay, so before I started recording, I set up this brand new table here, which is an empty game object called Scene Connector with the table and two buttons underneath it. We're going to add to the Scene Connector object a script, which we're going to call Scene Connector. Perfect. We are also going to add to the room one, room one and room two buttons script, which we're going to call, um, let's go with room connect button. Okay. And then we are also going to want to add this don't destroy script, which I'll walk you through in a second because we want to only use one scene, one scene connector throughout our entire game rather than having multiple, but I'll, we'll talk about that very soon. Okay, so now we're in here, we're going to start and write our scene connector script, and for this we're going to want to get a reference to the real-time object, not that, and we're just going to call it real-time as we have in the past, and this will just be using normal.realtime as before, Going to get a private string called room name, as well as a bool, which is just going to make sure that we don't, which is called loading scene because we want to have a ball that checks whether our scene is currently loading, and if it is, don't load the scene again because that would be a problem. And in fact, thinking about it, this should probably just be private, and we're just going to put it in here instead and call this real time equals find object of type real time okay perfect then in we don't need an update function so we'll delete this and we're going to define a new function which our buttons are going to call and this is going to be called reload scene and connect and it's going to take in a string which is going to be the new room name to connect to because how norm call works is each room has a specific name associated with it and you can connect to that room name, and if you do, that is uh, the new room you're in, basically. With And any other people connect to that room you'll be able to see, but you won't be able to see people in other rooms. Okay, so firstly we're going to check if the scene is loading when this is called, and if it is, just return. We're going to update room name to be the new room name. And then we're just going to start the coroutine which we're going to call load async async scene, which we will write now. Okay, so I enumerator, because that's how you define an async scene, async function, that's not right. That's how you define a function that goes inside a coroutine. We focused on typing, and we're just going to call this load async scene. Okay. Uh, once again, spell things correctly. Very important to make sure things work. See? And look, there's another spelling error. But now it's sorted. When this is first called, we're just going to make sure the loading scene is set to true so that it can't run again until it's done. And then right at the end, we're going to want the loading scene equals false as well. And the rest of our code is going to go between these two to make sure that nothing funky happens and we don't end up with some errors and in, in testing i found this was not required but it caused some weird problems if you didn't so first of all in this we're going to disconnect from the previous room and then we're going to call real time equals null just to remove the reference to it because we're going to be loading a new scene with it anyway 
And then we're going to define new async operation. And this is going to be async called async load. And we're going to use scene manager, which is not imported yet. And this controls the scenes that we're connected to within Unity. So we're going to just we're going to load that in and we're going to async load a new scene. But in our case, this is just going to be the same scene. We don't have anything else, so it's going to load the same one. In your game, you may want them to load different scenes, because it's, otherwise it's going to... Well, a game with only one level is... Well, it can be fine, but um, probably not for your game. Probably not for a lot of games. But it'd be interesting to see what you can do. Anyway, we're then going to define this here, which is a while wow loop with while... Wow. It's going to check if the async load is finished. And if it's not finished, just keep going, just keep waiting. So while async load is done, while async load isn't done, even though that's called is done, because that's what this uh, exclamation mark here is for, we're just gonna return null and wait for the next frame. That's what this does. Just wait for the next frame. Is it finished yet? And if it is, end the loop and then get a new reference to real time because our previous one will have been refreshed. And then we'll connect to that room instead. Connect to a new room of room name, I mean. Okay, perfect. And that is, I believe all of this done. Next up, we're just gonna go into our room connector and this is quite a bit simpler. And we're just gonna define, we're gonna get a reference to the scene connector. Scene connector. And then each of these buttons is going to have their own room name. Now, you probably don't want to define each button with its own room name in yours. You'll probably want to connect to an external API, which can, can handle connecting your users to the right rooms. Or maybe you want them to be able to put them in manually themselves. But in the case of this, we're just going to define it on the button. So to make it make things a bit easier for just showing you how the actual connections work. First of all, in start, we want to make sure we get a reference to the scene connector. And the reason we're doing it this way, instead of manually connecting it, like through the Unity editor, is because we want to use this same scene connector every single time we reload. These buttons are going to be recreated every time. So we just want to create a new reference to it. And then within here, not within here, we want to define we want to define another function which is just going to check if the user is overlapping with the button and that's just an easy on trigger enter check if the trigger the connect the the collided object is player not, not like that at all though that was a uh, like slightly to the right on my keyboard right and down is is if it has a tag player and if it does, we're just going to call scene connector and the reload scene and connect function we just defined, which will put all the gears in motion to get us connected to the right room. And also spell that right too. Can't spell today. And then all we want to do is define this don't destroy script, which I've already got written here, um, because this was mostly taken from the Unity documentation, which if I remember, I'll include a link to in the description. Okay. So this is an awake function, and then first line, we just find all game objects with the tag scene connector. If all if the length of the total objects is greater than one, we destroy the one doing it. And if it hasn't been destroyed, it will be set as the primary one because it's been the one that has been told don't destroy on load. Okay. Now we need to actually go into the editor and set everything up. First of all, we go into the scene connector once it's reloaded everything. And I've actually already added in this tag because I had a minor error in the recording. So I had to start again and I forgot to get rid of this. But if you don't have the scene connector tag here, which you won't, click add tag and you'll just be able to click plus here and add in your own tag. Like I already have done with scene connector. And attach that to that. And I've noticed all my scripts haven't properly reloaded. So just give me one second. Okay, now my scripts have properly reloaded. We're going to just define our rooms, which we're just going to call room one and room two. Nothing fancy there. Uh, then we just need to go into our left direct interactor and right direct interactor because these already have a collider on them set to trigger. And then we're just going to set them to player, which you should already have. 
but if not you add a tag in the exact same way as we did before and i believe that's all the last thing i forgot to mention was we just need to go in here and disable the join room on start and just get rid of the room name because no reason for it to be there and then all we need to do now is just go into an xr rig and because we're no longer connecting directly to the scene we're going to want to add in a new game object as a child of both of these which is just going to be a cube i'm just going to make it of size 0 0.1 to make it rather small uh, we can actually probably make it a little smaller to be honest like 0.05 just so that we have some indication of where the collision box is on our hand and then we'll just duplicate this and we'll place one under here as well and then on both of these cubes we're going to just turn get rid of their collider because we don't want these to be colliding with anything we just want them to be a way of visibly seeing what's going on now as you can see i'm connected to the scene as before i've got the little cubes i just added in and we'll just teleport over here and if i slap this button i should reload the scene and connect to a new room which i can't show you what i've done right now but i'll get to that when i show it with a friend in a little bit okay perfect and oh we reloaded the scene but i've just know and look as you can see our hands are connected now so we're properly connected to normal core i forgot to turn off the physics on these boxes so they just did that but we could do that pretty easily and also you'll notice the lighting has gone a bit weird but when you actually build this on your quest so you can actually play with it it'll be fine and as you can see these still work fine that still changes color and if we change it to green that's just so now that's all done and we're all set up and i've just shown you it working there's one more thing i just want to mention which is there's currently in, seems to be an issue you'll get an error coming up when you test it within unity if you test it too much within a scene where, where norm call will throw an error saying fail to close audio stream message or something to that effect i haven't been able to solve this yet and um it seems to be a problem with the oculus integration or potentially an error that hasn't been removed from normcore but apparently the error is non-blocking so that shouldn't be it but either way as you'll see in a second it runs completely fine when you actually build it it's just the connections are a bit funky when you're testing them actually within the unity editor okay great thanks for watching thanks for watching the video i really hope it helped out and i really hope you learned something I put quite a lot of effort into them, so if you if it did help you, I'd love to hear. And, and also, you know, let me know if there's anything you want to see next time. And, you know, you want to know more? More Unity VR? Uh, I've got some other videos on my channel. You can see them coming up either now or in a second. And following that, you can like and subscribe to see even more. The like doesn't see more. That just is nice for me to see. But the subscribe, that'll let you see more. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya.